people, thanks for joining me. My name's Scott and I make guitars happy. Today I've got a Gibson CS356 and that means it's a custom shop model. This model's different than the 339 because it looks like a Les Paul Custom or SG Custom. It also has what they call tangerine burst over almost highly figured maple top. I was almost going to say quilted maple, but a mahogany back and sides, which is one of the reasons that it's uh, different than a 339. It's very light, has a center block of uh, mahogany wood or some kind of wood inside of it, but it's still very light and uh, it's in for a finish repair. So I'm going to have to try to match up this color and um, I'll flip it over here and zoom in to the damaged area and we'll get started with the uh, repair. Okay, the damaged area is here and here from a guitar hanger. And um, I told him I would try to just uh, go in here with some 120 grit paper and knock down the, the kind of broken edges. Make it feel a little smoother before I do any color touch-up. I have 220 on one edge and 120 on the other edge. I think it's going to take a little bit of color. A little reddish brown, maybe not brown, but amber red. I'm going to go in here and just go around the whole thing and smooth it out. And then we'll drop in a little color. Okay, before adding the color, I want to put in a little barrier coat on the raw wood. I'm going to take this gel super glue, a paper towel. A couple reasons for this. don't want the color pooling up around the edges and creating kind of a dark line. Uh, kind of a, don't want this like dark circle um, surrounding or out, outlining the repair. This will keep the color from flowing in around the edges. The color wheel. I could see when I was sanding there are little bits of the finish of the colored finish that were chipping off and I could kind of see that it was a, a reddish orange. So I know if I take yellow and red I should get a nice orange. So we'll go down onto this workbench here and mix up yellow and orange. Did I say yellow and orange? I meant yellow and red. Yellow and red should give us orange. I'm going to use shellac for the color coat because if I screw it up, I can just wipe it right off with denatured alcohol. And this is Zinzer Spray Shellac. Ian Hates Guitar's preferred shellac. Okay, it's not a full drop, but just a dropper touched onto the edge. Of one of red. And my yellow looks like it's all dried up. There's a little in there. I can get a little on here. Might have to use vintage amber. I don't use the yellow very much. I guess it all dried up on me. A little vintage amber instead. This cherry red is really strong stuff. I gave it a full drop of vintage amber. And that's too red. I 
But it sure is orange, isn't it? Let's try a little more amber. This is going to be some concentrated stuff. So two drops of amber, one drop of cherry red. Oh boy. Crazy. Don't want to I don't think I want to use much more of that vintage amber. I want to go get me some of that lemon yellow. I think I'll throw this container out and put it in a smaller one. I've been using these smaller containers lately. I used to use these big old ones, which is fine for the vintage amber and some other ones I use all the time. So Customer was saying he, he kind of wanted to do this himself, but he looked into the, the cost of the stains and the cost of the lacquer and the lacquer retarder. And he said, that's going to cost me like $250 to buy these supplies. And uh, so he got a quote from me of a hundred and just decided to let me do it which I think was a good a good thing to do. Now that I got the color I want, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier, except this time with Fill and Finish Thin Glue Boost. I'm going to lock in my color with this glue boost here. That way my color doesn't wipe off later on. I'm dropping in that Nitro lacquer. The final top coat on this repair will be nitrocellulose lacquer. Same as the original finish from the factory. That way there's no witness lines and it all just blends together much better. Just a few drops. You take a little bit of lacquer retarder. soften up the lacquer so I don't leave a big witness line. It, uh, it prevents, well we'll just say it helps the new finish blend into the old existing. All right. back in an hour and do this again and uh, each time before I decide to put on more I'll just kind of feel it and make sure that it's to the point where it's uh, kind of proud and then I'll let it set for a week it'll shrink down a little bit we'll do our uh, level sanding and polishing and we'll be done I probably have to take these two off so I'll have to take the strings off that's always fun Well, it's been a week. Now I'm taking the strings off with my string winder. The plan is to take off the E string tuners so I can sculpt the little high bumpy lacquer ridges off. I'm going to level sand all that lacquer that I put on there a week ago. I take the uh, 120 grit sandpaper that has an adhesive back, you get the three quarter inch, maybe the one inch uh, wide rolls from Stuart McDonald and cut it into a little shape to stick it onto this optics. It's either optics or Lexan. 
clear plastic, very thin stuff. That allows me to go in here and sculpt that uh, lacquer into the shape that I'm looking for. Now this is going to leave some pretty large scratches. I'm going to switch sandpaper to 220, 320, and 400. Before switching over to a wet sandpaper, I'll do 600 through 2000, and then a 3000 grit Trizac paper. After the Trizac, I polish with a coarse polishing compound from Stuart McDonald. All these abrasives are from Stuart McDonald also. But when I first shot this, I actually used some of the medium compound right here. But I, I put the tuners back on and realized that I should have gone to the uh, coarse first. So I ended up taking the tuners back off, hitting it with the coarse compound medium and fine and then I had to put it back together again all over again that's, that's what happens sometimes when you miss a step but whenever doing lacquer as a general rule I think it's uh, safe to say you can stop at 3000 grit and go right to the coarse compound or if you're if it's a flat area you can use the guitar buffer the medium compound Well, I guess I'm ready to send her back home to her papa. <laughs> <laughs>